You're damn right. And F. Eric, too. Of course. Oh, F. Eric. Now he can't answer me back. F. Yeah. Eric. F. Eric. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Howard. What happened to Fred's voice? Isn't he taking care of himself? <laughs> I don't know. Something psychologically must have happened to Eric over the weekend because, uh, you know, Tom, you know, we had Monday off. Yeah. So Tom has this thing where he wants, like, Eric working. Uh. Fred Eric. So yesterday, t Fred came in with a hoarse voice, and they finally let him. What time did they let you leave? About 7.30 or so. Yeah, 7.30. <laughs> How'd you get so hoarse with those gigs you do? <clears throat> Actually, I had something brewing all last week, Yeah. and it just broke on Saturday, and that's it. Yeah, I'm not even allowed to do that, what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, just... have no voice. I'm not even allowed. <laughs> when I get sick, I gotta, I gotta have a voice. Tom doesn't allow it. You can be sick anywhere else. Yeah. But your voice. <laughs> Eric is even scarier with laryngitis. I know. <laughs> Isn't he? Yeah. So I he thought he was being awfully quiet today. I didn't know he was yeah. sick. He showed up yeah. yesterday and uh nah, saying I'm just just my voice. Everything else is fine. <laughs> right. I sound like Jackie now. Yeah. Well. Sorry to hear you sick. Yeah. I'm a hundred percent uh guilty. I'm 100% uh, guilty. I'm 100% uh, guilty. That's it. That's it. And, you know, that's it, but that too. I met a, a black guy the other day, Nosmo. What? His name is Nosmo. Nosmo? Yeah, Nosmo King. Isn't that the one guy that was on a, that's on Seinfeld? No, no, no. No, no, that's Cosmo. This guy's name is Nosmo. King. And I asked him, I said, how does your mother name you Nosmo King? He says, I'll tell you the truth. She's in the hospital, and they had a sign on the wall, N-O-S-M-O-K-I-N-G. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, stop it, Hal. No smoking. And his mama read it, and then Nosmo King, and that became his name. His sister's name is Exit. <laughs> That's a true story. Nosmo King. I wrecked him, you're right. <laughs> what is it, Lamone? Well, Lamone. Lamone, rather. <laughs> I hate your guts. I think you suck. The whole world blows. You are such schmucks. The clouds are always over my head. I really wish that I was dead. The best thing for me would be death. I hate my life. I hate every breath. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Baba Booey, and you're listening to the best of the Howard Stern Show. Let's get back to that newscast with Robin Quivers as comedian Gilbert Gottfried sits in. What else you got there, Robin? A white lesbian. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> mm. Mm. yes. Has mm. been given well, the hello right. There. Mm. <laughs> has been given the right to adopt a black handicapped child. Hello, mommy. <laughs> My, I might not be able to walk too good, but I know I love a white lesbian when I see one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a girl, Howard. It's oh, a girl wow. child. Hmm. Mommy, you my handicap. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the child's grandmother objected to the adoption. Well, I object. <laughs> I thought this man's lawyer. <laughs> they you're, not, you're not going to give my granddaughter to no lesbian. That's right. They oh. had an objection to the race and the sex practices of uh, this adoptive parent. Black and handicapped. Yeah, what's next? Why, why doesn't he find one that's bald old son missing an arm? <laughs> Baby, who gonna help that baby now? Who gonna help that baby? The judge said, uh, contrary to forceful arguments against having this child with a white lesbian, the law of this state and the nation does not legitimize private prejudices. Well, uh, in defense of this uh, white lesbian here, <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to calm down, Grandma. What you getting so upset about? Who gonna take care of that baby? Who gonna take care of it with a lesbian? What kind of strikes that poor black child gonna have again here? Now, I can't take care of no handicapped child. That's your... Hold on now. Don't you get all worked up, Grandma. <laughs> hey, come on. Who gonna do it? Who gonna do it? I can't take care of no handicapped child, but I certainly don't think no living gonna be able to do that. <laughs> well, this now, is... you look at here. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, you don't know what you're talking about either. And then shut up, man. Because you don't say that's what to be. Oh, I do too. Yeah, I do too. 
<laughs> now, woman, you're getting all... Yeah, shut up! Don't tell me I'll get inside. You don't know what I would do that to, to you! What if she tries to kiss the girl? <laughs> no, nah, I don't think the lesbian gonna get the handicap back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do about it? You don't know even know the lesbian. <laughs> now look here, now I came by and saw my grandbaby playing with that lesbian vibrator <laughs> like a Tonka toy. <laughs> lesbian vibrator? Imagine she's the, imagine the baby see a vibrator and think it's a toy and start to start to play with it. And then feel it, uh, uh, you know, and then she get excited. <laughs> and then she become a lesbian handicapped black girl. <laughs> oh, come on now. And then besides, she only feed the baby fish. Oh, now, yeah. Daddy, I'm a misnomer now. Come on now here, honey. We are living in 1993. No lesbian ain't just gonna feed the baby fish. <laughs> and she'll have a daddy named Louise. <laughs> Louise, now yeah. you young Funny you crazy. say that because she does have yeah. a companion of 17 years. Oh, I told you. <laughs> now, woman, this is happening all over America. If that lady loved a baby, if that lady loved a baby, that's true, a lady. But this is a man. <laughs> this is a man and woman too. <laughs> now you gone crazy, woman. How many black couples you know want to adopt another black baby with a handicap? <laughs> I'm tired of this argument. I'm sick and tired of arguing with you. Well, I'm sick and tired of arguing with you. The way I see it, the baby will get so confused, maybe she will forget that she am handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> now you can kiss my ass. <laughs> And what if she kissed that baby one time while wearing a, a, a pubic hair on her lip? From her lesbian lover. <laughs> now you gone and become distasteful in my argument. <laughs> Can we go on? All right, I'm you sorry. Too much fun. <laughs> yeah, with all, all right. These stories. With the news. Jerry Seinfeld is ah. with the news today. Uh oh. Apparently. Excuse me, uh, are you in kindergarten? <laughs> <laughs> USA Today reporting on Jerry's appearance. Hey, on the show put down yesterday. that Randall, baby. <laughs> <laughs> they say he breaks his silence on his young love. She, on our show? Yes. Did they credit us? Yes, they did. Monday, he told Howard Stern's radio audience the relationship didn't work out. I was dating a girl named Shoshana Longstein. <laughs> I couldn't pronounce Shoshana, so I had to break it up. <laughs> Plus, she wasn't potty trained. She didn't know how to read. And I'm, our parents had to drive her to my house each day. I don't like a girl... When too much hair has grown in. <laughs> <laughs> she had hair growing on her head even, for God's sakes. I would have loved Howard Hughes. I like a girl that still has to have the intestines washed off her. Oh, shit. <laughs> What? I don't know what he's talking about. You're out of your mind. I like a girl that still has the unbiblical cord attached. There you go. <laughs> unbiblical cord. Unbiblical cord. Unbiblical cord. Her, when her biblical cord attached. <laughs> when Jerry was asked if he had made out with the young beauty. Yes. No, she started crying, and then her carriage started rolling down the block, and I had to run after it. <laughs> Seinfeld noted that there were some things he'd rather not discuss on right. Stern's horny little show. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Like Jerry why Seinfeld her babysitter had to be in the room every minute. I was late for our first date, picking up Play-Doh and condoms. <laughs> what did I know? Who are these pedophiles? <laughs> <laughs> They're asking if Madonna's pregnant in the news today. She's too old for me. <laughs> People are saying, you know, they saw a picture of her in the Daily News the other day where she looked a little porky, and they yeah. think, oh, maybe she's pregnant. Maybe she's having somebody's baby. Jerry, you wouldn't go out with Madonna? No, she's way too old. Any girl who has hair on her head, right. I cannot go out with. Have you ever dated, like, a 12-year-old? Oh, uh, yes, but, see, they start to know a little more. <laughs> <laughs> they know too much. They're already getting a little too bitter in the ways of life. <laughs> you need someone innocent. Yeah. They're yeah. jaded already, those 12-year-olds. The minute they smack the girl's butt and she starts crying, that's when I start dating them. <laughs> I see a tampon and I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, girl who has teeth growing in, I don't want. <laughs> Ah, what was that, a tooth? Oh, oh, she's teething now. I'm sorry, we're going to have to break it off. I tell you, that just cost you the Hellman's commercial. <laughs> 
I hope you didn't have any other endorsements planned. Who are these people who are potty trained? <laughs> I say goodbye. Yeah. Charlie Rose is in the news this morning. I love how all these guys, you know, with the... Uh... Does he have a kid? <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> You're listening to the Howard Stern. Yeah, rock me. The Howard Stern. Rock me. Yeah, now I'm rocking. God damn it, I love rock and roll. Look at me. Come on. Kiss my ass now. Yeah, kiss my ass in Macy's window. Come on. Suckle me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like to bang my bitch's head into the wall when I'm having sex to this song. Good thing you don't have one. Yeah. Oh, I got a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm angry. Such a hostile man. Yeah. <laughs> Six ten in the morning, and I'm out of steam. <laughs> I ran out of crap to talk about. Good night, everybody. It finally happened. It finally happened. Leave me alone. <laughs> Kiss my ass. Hey, first of all, let me say something. The uh, station that we're suing. <laughs> went to all the ad agencies and said I was a scumbag because I wished cancer on Larry Wirt. <sighs> Gee whiz, or AIDS, or whatever I wished on him. Therefore, that makes me a bad person. Just because I want Larry Wirt, who runs Evergreen, to get AIDS. It's amazing that advertisers yeah. responded to that yeah. silly. Yeah, well, they actually got caught up in it. Because what happened was my ratings were going up so goddamn fast in Chicago, everybody freaked out. And the only way they could get rid of me is not to be competitive. No, they couldn't do better radio. No, they couldn't do better radio. So what they did is they went to the ad agencies and had me blackballed. And you know, I've got the biggest set of black balls there are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did Larry ever get AIDS? Did it work? Did it work? No, My I wish? I think so. I oh, it didn't? Heard. Oh, jeez. I hope the ad agencies can handle that. Usually when I wish AIDS on people, they get the goddamn disease. <laughs> <laughs> Scumbags. Uh, <laughs> And then um, there was one scene. Actually, uh, Jackie's wife was an extra in one of the scenes. Really? Yeah, she was, when I was back at college. So I'm sitting there with my movie wife, Mary McCormick. Yeah. And I'm talking to her, and then all of a sudden I see Nancy's behind me, Jackie's wife. So I turn around and I start making out with her. You know how I am with her. What? Yeah, I just started making out with her. You don't mean uh, yeah. touching her? No, I mean, I first I grabbed her ankle, I started feeling up her leg, and then I went over and I got on her mouth and I started making out with her. And my, you what I mean you got on her mouth? I, you know, I was making out with her. So you then kissed her? I kissed her. So... My boy. screen wife turns around and goes, holy mackerel, what kind of man are you? You just go over one of the extras and start making out with him? <laughs> yeah, I just want to see him freak her out. I go, yeah, that's right. That's what I'm about. Uh, I love my audience. This girl's a big fan. So she's like, wow, you're disgusting. That really turns me off. I say, well, what do you care? You're my screen wife. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I got to get some sex. <laughs> you're not giving me anything. Yeah, you're not giving me nothing. How is that going yeah, with that you two? Bro, who? My you screen wife? Mary, yeah. It's going nice. I mean, she's become a friend, you know. Yeah. yeah but I'm not interested in her. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got one report on you. Yeah. Who, did, who told me that? Somebody I was talking to said to me, Howard's in love with his screen wife. No, he's oh, crazy. That's what they told me. Yeah, that's all I need. <laughs> Now, she got a boyfriend or something. I know she brought her boyfriend to the set. Yeah. doesn't mean you have to not fall in love with her. No, nah, I don't even fall in love. First of all, let me tell you something. If I ever got divorced from my wife, the last thing i do is fall in love with some bitches. Let me tell you my oh, life. Listen, what listen. I would do is... Some bitches? Oh, yeah, let oh, me see. Oh, you going to go gay? <laughs> yeah. No, what I would do is I would conduct my life if I was single a whole different way. Uh-huh. How would that be? I would just have sex and then dump women. Sure. All right? Yeah. All right? I'm too strong to fall in love. Right, sure. Uh, you think I get remarried in two seconds? I know. Married it. by that afternoon. <laughs> That's right. I know it. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. Don't think so. Don't think so. All right. I gotta shoot up. <laughs> now you're doing heroin. Heroin. I've been smoking pot 24 hours a day. Stop it. Yeah, now I'm heavy into that. Ugh. Jesus. Are you kidding? And me? drinking. Oh my God. Yeah. You drinking? Bad. And drinking and smoking. Movie life. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr., here you come. I went, I went, one night I was doing the movie. I was shooting late till about two or three in the morning. I get in, I smoked about 800 joints, drank a beer, and drank a whole bottle of wine and passed out. Ew. Now that's how bad I am, okay? <laughs> All no right. wonder you look so bad. Yeah.
I almost believed you just then. Yeah. Now, everything's go. My screen wife is really great. She's a yeah. terrific actress, and uh, she's really great in the movie. Uh-huh. She's really great, and she's a lot of fun. She's, a, she's friends. You know, she's my friend. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that's what you wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just what I want. Is her boyfriend banned from the set still? Yeah. I, I, no. He, he hasn't he, shown no, up again? He's supposed to show up today. Oh, I'll really? kick him in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll beat his ass. <laughs> You know, because when you're doing a movie, you try to get some steam going. Man. Right. Yeah. You don't need to see him. But everyone says we have a lot of chem. Ivan said I have a lot of chemistry with her. Yeah? Yeah. So we look good on screen together. Well, that's good. Well, she looks good. You know me. You well, know what I look like. She looks so good, you yeah. almost look good together. I almost, yeah, it almost <laughs> convinces girls that I'm good looking. <laughs> So uh, you want, look, there's a couple of people waiting on the phone want to ask some questions. And then um, I'll get back and tell you everything about Chicago and uh, everything that yeah, went on. Yeah, that's great that we're back on FM in Chicago. Started yeah. today? Yeah, starting today, I think. I'm pretty sure. Hey, you're on the air. This is Tony. Hey, Tony, lower your radio, you bastard. You know, I'm a... Oh, I got a fart. Hold on a second. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, I had a little gas from breakfast this morning. That's probably all of you. Damn, that's what I think. <laughs> Robin's face, all confused. No, I mean, it is true to a degree. You you know, when you do love scenes and stuff with a, with a woman, you could kind of... I got a boner, so... I mean, if Did that's... Did you? Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, hell Good yeah. Ah. I get a boner if I rub up against a tree. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. There's nothing. You're talking about me. Guy's been married for 20-something years. <laughs> Gotta watch who you mug. Yeah. They said they told the guy when he was in the police car, you know, guess who you just mugged? And he slumped. He was like, oh. <laughs> oh, no. no. Oh, I'm having a bad day. <laughs> I just mugged Tony the Chin's mother. Good. What are the odds? <laughs> yeah, he got all of Manhattan a mug. He just mugged the mob boss's mother. <laughs> Stupid ass. Serves you right. That's a Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> it's the greatest. <laughs> you know what I did in my trailer? What? Actually, uh, my movie wife turned me on to this. I rented the Cindy Crawford um, Video? Mo the, movie. The, 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 oh, fair, fair game. game? It's got to be the single most funny movie you could have. Have you ever seen it? I saw it in the yeah. movie theater. Okay. Cindy Crawford is a totally vapid individual. I'm convinced she's the dumbest person on the planet. you got to rent this movie, Fair Game. I've only gotten through about 20 minutes because I keep oh, rewinding God. it. You I gotta... haven't gotten to the best parts then. Oh, wait a second. We talk about the best parts. Cindy Crawford plays a lawyer. Yes. Okay. She just gets a bullet in her arm. She goes to the police precinct, and she walks in, and she goes like this. I just got a bullet in my arm. This is how she acts. And she talks in monotone, because I think someone must have told her on a movie you're supposed to talk quiet. And not move your lips. And, my, and plus, she's used to being a model, so you probably don't move your lips a lot right. when you're a model. You're right. supposed to hold perfect. And she's posing and everything. Poses in every goddamn scene. In fact, I think that models learn to talk without moving their lips so the makeup people can constantly dab on makeup. Yeah. So she goes... She goes to Billy Baldwin, who's not a bad actor, but he comes down right to her level. Oh. Because when you're in a scene with her, it's it really like bad. nobody knew how to act at yeah. this point. So she's wearing, now she's a lawyer, mind you, she's wearing a bippy shirt. Right, that's what I like, that the yeah. shirt kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. She's wearing a little tube top and a, a short skirt. Uh -huh. and, and she's, a, 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 you know, an attorney. <laughs> this is her attorney. And they keep wedding her, and, you know, it's just really funny yeah. what they do with this attorney. Yeah, so she's sitting there, and she goes, I just got shot. And he goes, well, what were the circumstances? I really can't tell you anything except I saw a car. I, unless, uh, except I saw a car drive by. If that's important, if that's important. And she's yeah, a lawyer. That, yeah, she's a lawyer. If that's important. Miss Detail. Yeah, what a <laughs> dick! I like to smack her in the head. <laughs> she is the dumbest person. No wonder Richard Gere had to get. Imagine what those two talked about. <sighs> You know what kills me about Richard Gere? He thinks he's so goddamn intelligent with his Dalai Lama, and he's living this whole thing. Oh, he married calm Cindy down. Crawford. Calm down. You would have married her, too. No, oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> I'd marry just about anybody who paid attention to me. Uh, Jesus. He married a mannequin. Not that you wouldn't have. Yeah, she is a little piece of ass. <laughs> Who cares what she says? Quite frankly, tell her to keep her lips tight. The, the problem came when they tried to have a conversation. He hadn't talked to her. <laughs> yeah, Cindy Crawford. Val Kimmer could just blew her off, too. I heard. There's only so much you can take of her. I'd sew her mouth shut. <laughs> just, just sew it up. All right, dude, so you, you want to play your phone call? 
Yeah, well, you said you guys have the. Ch- I got Channel Four and I got Channel Nine. All right. But uh, you want to hear the Channel Nine one? I got it ready. I'll hear anything. I'll hear. I'll hear both. What was Channel Nine? Do you didn't make that one? I made Channel Four. Yeah, I made them both. Oh, you oh. made them both. But, what uh, is it, Gary? You have the Channel Four tape. You have a better copy. Oh, I got a better copy. Yeah. Where is it? Right That's it. Yeah. Okay, I'll play the Channel Four one. Okay. Now, I understand you called in as Eric Norris? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, that was good. And they even had a crawl across the screen that said Eric Norris. Yeah, yeah I, got, I got it on videotape and I got it on audio tape. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Norris, that name's becoming famous. <laughs> yeah. And I all got right. every, I got all you guys' names. All in right, there. here's your Chuck Scarborough one. Okay. This is a special report from Ooh, News Channel 4. Mr. Scarborough, if you're just joining us, I want to bring you up to date on an air crash off the south shore of Long Island tonight. It apparently, according to our reports, is TWA Flight 800 that departed JFK Airport for Charles de Gaulle in Paris. Uh, there were reported... By the way, can I say something? Yeah. What did I always say from the beginning of this radio show? Never go to goddamn France. It'll oh, only cause you a heartache. They didn't get blown up in France. They got blown up here. Yeah, but they were on their way to France. Did anybody? Did that, did that cross anybody's mind? Because the goddamn French are I such don't pussies. I understand what France has to do with the complaint and come from Athens or Don't matter. Place. Anything to do with France, avoid. <laughs> France is full of pussies. Oh, you're too much. 212 passengers and 17 crew members on board. Now, the site of the crash is 10 miles off of the Atlantic Ocean, south of Mauritius Bay on the south shore of Long Island. A Coast Guard C-130 rescue plane has reported life rafts and wreckage in the water. And I have Kevin Smith of the United States Coast Guard on the telephone right now. Uh, Kevin, can you tell me exactly what's going on? Well, right now we, ha- we do have a C-31 out there checking out checking out the wreckage. <laughs> there was also a problem with there was, you know, some fishermen and boats out there. And they, you know, they refuse to get away. They keep yelling, Howard Stern, Bubba Booey, Howard Stern, Robert Crimmins, Bubba Booey, Howard Stern, Howard Stern, Bubba Booey. Hello? Uh, well, let's cut this off here. Um, I apologize for that. That certainly was terribly inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> sure was. And then in the middle of this tragedy, when oh people out there God. are worried about their loved ones, to make right. that kind of an insensitive <laughs> display is uh, highly offensive, oh, highly Jack's inappropriate. Really and I hope that person's friends identify him and, uh, and let him know exactly what he has just done. Right. I will tell you what we know about this. Right you mean your friends should call you <laughs> and tell you what you, what you just did? <laughs> Don't you know what you did? I got right on. Did any of your friends call you? Did any of your friends call you and tell you what you did? I, call, I called up everybody as soon as I. Oh, you called your friends? Yeah, you called them. Because <laughs> I had it on tape. I'm like, listen what I just did. <laughs> Disaster that is unfolding off the south shore of Long Island from various sources. Uh, you, I mean, you don't even know what a C-130 is, do you? Yeah, yeah, C-1, I said it wrong on the radio. I, I said it's a C-31. Right. And it's a C-130. What is a C-130? It's a plane. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know that. I don't even know what a car is anymore. Wow. <laughs> but he's supposed to be in the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard has boats. <laughs> well, obviously, You're Chuck doesn't know that either. <laughs> I got a C-31 here. Yeah, we got a C-31 They're yelling Baba Booey, Robin Quivers. Those damn fishermen. I apologize for that. And let me just say something here. In the middle of a tragedy, I hope this person, whoever made this call, his friends will call him and tell him what he did. (laughs) (laughs) That's admonishment. I think he's going to say he was hoping the police would arrest him. Yeah, I think that in the middle of that statement, he realized there was no law against it. (laughs) Right. It's up to your friends. Robin, yeah. can't they pass a law against some, that kind of behavior? I think they will soon. Yeah. They ought to come after you. But I think you're safe. they got to pass the law first, so you're, you get in under that. You know, he thinks it's th- the same as throwing a, ba- a, a, a snowball at a Giants game or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, where people get hurt. That was my brother. That guy. What? <laughs> that was your brother. <laughs> hey, dude, do you mind holding on? I want to hear the Channel 9 call, but i got to take a break. Okay. All right. Hold on. I think Captain Jenks made some call during Hurricane Bertha. I think he got yelled at, too. All right. Hold on. Because that evidently was inappropriate as well. Oh, dear. You can't even call during a hurricane. No. The point about these calls is there's no appropriate time to make them. And they're not going to make them when nothing's happening. Yeah. (laughs) Because no one will put you on. That's right. (laughs) That's what I tried to explain to my screen wife. (laughs) She just didn't see it. You know, I I was like, hey, you know, what do you want from me? (laughs) I was just thinking, some of these calls could be international. If you ever do CNN... Yeah. That's all over the world. Oh, sure. Well, that's, that's a coup d'etat. <laughs> <laughs> that's where your friends from all over the world call that's you. That's right. Then they call and you. And they tell you what you did wrong. In different oh, yeah. languages. Yeah. All right. I got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Last night, I tried to take get sleeping pills, and I couldn't. I couldn't sleep. I was upset about something. 
And then um, I asked my wife if she had any sleeping pills, and she did, and I was going to take a bunch. She hey had now. sleeping pills? Uh, yeah, she had some. What is she doing with sleeping pills? <laughs> Try living with me. <laughs> See if you can get to sleep. Oh, my God. <laughs> Try living with a maniac. I do. I live with me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, I forgot. Well, yeah. you know what it's like, man. <laughs> hmm. I tried to convince my wife to take the whole bottle. Oh. <laughs> then I could get to sleep. <laughs> Stop <laughs> nagging me. Oh, correct. Help me. Oh. Yeah, she goes, I go, you got any sleeping pills yet? Would you mind taking some? <laughs> You're nagging the hell out of me. Oh, she didn't bother you. Nah, this she was cool. No, she was great. She was great. <laughs> Christ almighty, rat finks. You know, it's really funny, even during this plane crash, uh -huh. it's really weird how everyone's screaming, gee, they're not identifying the bodies fast enough. Well, you know, Jesus Christ, it's a, it's a, no one was prepared for this disaster. It's not like we are prepared for this kind of thing. Am I right? Ever. What? <laughs> yeah, this is like a puzzle that's trying to put people back together. I mean, have you ever tried to... You ever hear the, the, the thing Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> no. I'm being serious. Oh, how? So when a guy is blown out of the sky... And I know this from Vietnam. Uh, when a guy is blown out of the sky, you what do you you think you could just put him back together in a minute? You think you can look at a picture and go, "Oh, that's Sally over there." You know, but, you know, it's uh, ironic, but you got to understand something. It's a sad, it's a horrible tragedy. I mean, nothing makes me sadder than. And let me tell you something. Those poor children. I am so for blowing up all of the Arab lands. I am so for. Howard. You know who did this? Even if we, they, you know, once again, now in Oklahoma, when the Oklahoma City bombing started or happened, you were ready to go to war with. Iran or I still Iraq. feel. I still think we should blow up Iran over the Oklahoma bomb. <laughs> Even though it was had nothing to do with <laughs> we the We should have used it as a convenient excuse. <laughs> We're stupid. Oh, you. But do you ever see, I mean, can you imagine now, now put yourself in the place of people who are collecting these remains. And now, these are in the water. They pull out a finger and they expect, you know, everyone say, that's Bill. <laughs> now, let me say something. You cannot pull a finger out of the water in two seconds and identify that as Bill. Well, you know, they want to fire the, the uh, medical examiner. They're, they're very upset about the whole thing. Only Good. 46 people have been identified. Listen. I figure you all know everybody died. Exactly. Every, if someone hasn't shown up home in a month, you know they're gone. Unbelievable. What's the rush? What they really should do is just take all the remains. If I was, you see, this is why I'm not an examiner. See, if I was an examiner, what I would do is, you know me, I'm lazy and I cheat. <laughs> I would just take all the remains that I had, I'd put them equally into it. <laughs> divide them up. Divide them up and just say, hey, here's your... <laughs> I, who would know the difference? <laughs> who would know? No, seriously, who would know? Oh, Howard. Who would know? Everybody be happy. Right. All right. It'd be done fast. <laughs> yeah. I just get like some bones and flesh and say, here's your relative. How come he has a beak? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know, man. Don't look so close. That's <laughs> right. He got fins. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like, you know, and you know what? I know it's the filthy, stinking uh, Middle Eastern conflict that is causing this. Look, and this is, don't know this is the anything. M.O., this is the M.O. You know that the even if it, even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't <laughs> in this particular case. We need to blow them up. Anyway. We need. To, let me tell you something. <laughs> when you're a kid and a bully is bullying you, there's yes. two things you can do. You can sit there and get beaten, much like I did, or you can strike back. And what we really need to do as a country is decide which nations we're going to blow up. And when I say blow up, I mean total devastation, drop atom bombs on them. Because we have to wipe them off the planet Earth. You're because for we have nuclear hostile, weapons? I'm for nuclear weapons. I'm coming out for nuclear weapons. I have <laughs> being never done used. The, yeah, being used in force. <laughs> I mean, we got them, total, but you want to use yeah, them. Yeah, total massive destruction. <laughs> I'm talking about wiping off entire populations. Uh -huh. Because it's either us or them. But somehow, we never do that. We're pussies. And we're sitting and thinking that you know, this is problems. You know, because I'm sitting and thinking about Japan. We now have to have the remorse every year. That's right. Of, you know, thinking back to when we did bomb those people. We should have killed all the Japanese. <laughs> and we wouldn't have this problem. We wouldn't feel guilty today. They just wouldn't be around. Nobody to complain. It's like the Indians. There's so few of them left, you don't feel guilty anymore. Oh, stop that. They can't be around to complain. You give them a bottle and they go off. Oh. You are horrible. <laughs> That's right. You are horrible. When I was done with these these Arab lands, they would they would look like Wyoming, flat. <laughs> right. I would, because you know something? This is only going to get worse. There's going to be more and more terrorist bombings. It's going to get worse and worse. So it's either us or them. 
And what are you going to do, sit around and wait for us to be blown but up? Why blow up just plain folks, yeah, kids going to France sad. to, to learn the language? That's what I'm saying. You're dealing with animals. You're not dealing with rational people. It's so crazy. Right. Well, if you're not going to deal rationally, you've got to blow up these countries. But let's find out if it was a bomb first. It was a bomb. Well, they say Please. it might have been a bomb. And I know a lot of the relatives are really pissed off. You know that why? That the government isn't saying it was a bomb? Yeah, it's a bomb. Of course it's a bomb. Or it could have been a missile. Yeah. Now that's Did you see wild. that? That's wild. That's that scares me more. Yeah. A missile. Then, and forget about it. Then all hell's breaking loose. <laughs> This is the strangest thing since Fred changed his name to Eric. And do you know I was in Europe <laughs> yeah. having flown TWA oh, really? Were you, the, you when went, this happened? You went on vacation to Europe? Yeah, I wow. went to uh, Italy. Oh, make me feel worse. Oh, God. God, everybody's going somewhere. Oh. And everybody at the hotel, the Italians were laughing at me. Oh, you flew TWA. Man, yeah, that's, yeah, they're <laughs> laughing at you. They take a five-hour siesta every day. You can't get any business done. And they That's even, the truth. You Did even, you know that? Yeah, and you're not even allowed to talk business during their siestas. They take off from yeah. about 1 o'clock in the afternoon yep. till 5.30 and then open up the stores again for two hours I know. from 5.30 to 7.30. Terribly productive country. It's a crazy country. Did you take your horse with you to Italy? No, I did not take, take my horse on the plane? to Italy. Imagine they found horse remains. <laughs> Imagine being on that plane and it blows up. Oh, man. But I tell you, I'd bomb. I just hope everybody went quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be bad. Go slow is worse. Yeah, to know that mm. you're going. I don't think you know. I don't think you know what hits you. I hope you don't know. They said some people drowned. Yeah, <laughs> but they were unconscious and already yeah. dying when they yeah. drowned. Isn't that bad? You survive and then you drown? Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if you had landed on <laughs> land, though, you'd have broken up. Right. At I least tell there you, weren't any alligators to get this group. Blow up all these countries. You know which countries I'm talking about. Iran, Iraq. What's that one with that pockmarked face despot? Oh, uh, Gaddafi. Gaddafi Libya. duck. Libya. Libya. When I was done, all these Islamic medical examiners wouldn't be able to tell Muhammad from Muhammad. <laughs> aren't they all named Muhammad? <laughs> it would be unbelievable. But you can't be mad at the medical examiner on Long Island. This guy's not prepared for it. It is very, you know, you're not talking, you know, I don't think people realize when, when a plane blows up, you're looking at, you might be looking at a fingernail. Well, that's uh, definitely what they said in the value jet crash, that they yeah. were getting back ears. And yeah, I mean, imagine an ear, and this was, a, I, that's, bring in the guy. Is that your sister's ear? <laughs> right, let's see them identify it. You try to you try you try that on a friend. See if you can isolate a body part and see if you can identify their ear. It's not easy. Well, they say they need the bodies for closure. Yeah. Okay, but give the guy a chance. Crying out loud. I know everyone's coming down on the guy, but you know, think about how inept you are at your job. Why do you expect anybody to be any good at theirs? <laughs> think about it. Think about how incompetent you are. I love all these people, too. The They're all going, I blame the medical examiner and TWA. They can't give me a definite answer. Go, Dude, you're looking at a guy. You're looking at a guy's foot. People are screaming because the guy who runs TWA didn't say anything. Yeah. What was he going to say? Yeah, what's he going to say? The same thing you heard on the news. That's what he knows. Yeah. How come TWA doesn't tell us something? Everybody wants to be, you know, we, we have to get our, our news from the news. But where do you think the guy from TWA is going to get the news? He don't know. They were like, he's not around. And most of these medical examiners, in their whole career, they do one body, two bodies at most. And their whole body. Yeah, the whole bodies. And you go, oh, that's Bill. Of course, look. Look at his face. That's Bill. Sometimes even <laughs> then they can't tell. Right. Take a, do an experiment at home today, if, if, you, if you think I'm wrong about this. Take a goldfish and put a firecracker in its mouth <laughs> and blow it up. And see if you can figure out who it is after the explosion. <laughs> Take two goldfish. <laughs> yeah, right. See if you can identify. And try to put them. Yeah, yeah. Try and identify one from the other. Just so I'm gonna tell you two, not a, a boat a boatload. Do a goldfish and yeah. a mouse. You still yeah. could. Right. <laughs> what do you say? Goldfish and a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a few Robin interpreting jokes. <laughs> I'm beginning to understand. <laughs> yeah. Take a goldfish and a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. All right, you want to get back to this guy's phone call? All right, this is the guy who called uh, Channel 9, is Eric Norris. You, you there? This yeah. is Jimmy. All right, Jimmy, go ahead. All right, you want me to play it straight through, or are you going to be interrupting? Hmm. Well? Well, play it straight through. Okay. 
All right. Just the end of the NBC one right here. Now we have a witness on the telephone. Here? Eric you make it louder. Was apparently coming from the beach and saw the plane. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, dude, dude. How's that? Dude, dude. All right, start it again from the beginning and make it louder. Okay. Oh, damn it. I wish this guy was prepared. I'm prepared. Tell us what you saw. Get the phone right there. Get the phone. Oh, wait a second, dude, dude. Yeah. How, do you have, like, like how are you doing this? Where is this? Where's the phone? I'm, I'm, I'm going to put the phone closer to it. It's still in my ear. All right. All right? Yeah. Sources. According to now we have a witness on the telephone. How's that? Eric Good. Morris was apparently coming from the beach and saw the plane go down. Eric, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, Tell us what you saw. Well, I was, I was, I got done with a, with a night of fishing, and me and my friend Jack Marlowe, we were leaving the beach, and in my rearview mirror, it, it, oh, it just sort of lit up the sky. It was like an explosion. This big fireball. Dude, dude, dude. Dude, what are you doing? Dude, dude. He's sitting on his phone. What a dick. What? <laughs> what a dink. Dude. Hey, dude. What is he doing? He's sitting on his phone or something and he doesn't realize it. What a jackass. See, I got to say to my screen wife, you see what I mean? You can't. Well, how can you control this guy? How can I control this guy? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> What's going on? It's not a touch tone, is it? What's he doing? It's not a touch tone phone. Hmm. I don't give up. He sat on. <laughs> sat on the phone. <laughs> Want to hear Captain Jenks call during Hurricane Bertha? Yeah. As long as we're into this motif. <laughs> I don't know if he's still there. You there, Jenks? Captain. Captain, you there? Hello? Hmm. This is not Captain Jenks. Hold on. Oh, I see. Line 12. Captain Jenks, you there? My man, will you get a life? Morning, Howard. Hey, would you just play your phone call? Okay. Jeez. What did you do? Hurricane Bertha call? Yeah, Hurricane Bertha. They're, in fact, the, the first one is to the Weather Channel. Did you get yelled at? Oh, yeah, I got yelled at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. You got yelled at by the Weather Channel? <laughs> <laughs> There we go. By the way, welcome in Chicago, WCKG. We are broadcasting on WJJD and CKG this morning, our AM and FM. AM and FM. Yes, we are. We're back into Chicago. We were bounced off. Full the, strength. We were coming on real strong in Chicago. We were about to take over the number one slot when our com competition, Evergreen Media and, and Man Queer, they all got together and got the advertising agencies to boycott us and blackball us. But uh, screw that. Infinity Broadcasting bought WCKG. And uh, we're back on. See? All good things happen to good people. Man cow's in serious trouble, Howard. Well, he's the man queer. Yes, he is. And he, he knows that his dead daddy's skull is going to be f by me on stage. I'm going to take his dead daddy's rotting skull and f it. And I'll take the leftovers. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, that's from getting closer to the coast. Emergency management people are getting uh, very busy from the Carolinas down through Florida. And on the phone right now, we have Tom Ditt. He's a spokesman, director Tom of the North Carolina <laughs> Emergency Management. And Tom, I imagine things are hopping there this morning. Uh, you got that right, Mark. There's uh, been a severe hurricane warning issued for the outer banks of North Carolina and Paris Islands. Paris Island residents, military units, and dependents are expected to be evacuated within the next 24 hours pending the arrival of Hurricane Bird. Well, he's good. All flights in and out of the Raleigh and F. Jackie area have been postponed until further notice of Baba Booey's Big Green Choppers. By the way, if you want the new Captain Jank CD, call 1-800-MUSIC-NOW. How do you like them apples? That sounds like it's a pretty busy morning, pretty serious situation there. And do you have any special words of advice for uh, local residents or, or tourists to the area? Yeah, I'd like to say Grease Man sucks and Howard Stern rules, and you suck too. <laughs> Okay, I, I guess I guess we got a, a, a wrong phone line there, so we do apologize for that. A wrong phone line. Anyway, let's pass uh, along some more important information from North Carolina. Obviously, we had a bogus call there. <laughs> Obviously, I love that. It was obvious to everyone but you. Yeah, he got real mad. Yeah, that's the Weather Channel, so you know I had to get a plug for myself in there too. And thanks for mentioning me. Absolutely, and Grease Man sucks. And F Jack. <laughs> and F Jackie. Yeah, and F Blaze. The Raleigh and the F Jackie area. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else there? Yes, I, this one is to CNN and Bobby Batista. Oh, oh see, this is international. It's international. Bobby Batista is the one with the cross eyes. Yes. The blonde with the, the eye that turns in. That oh, is yeah. really hard to watch. First, I thought she was just reading a weird teleprompter. 
<laughs> I didn't know what was happening to her. Does she have a glass eye? I, I think I can see the writing on that eye. Can't yeah. you? Yeah, you see, you see the teleprompter and the reflection. <laughs> yeah, she is bug-eyed. <laughs> okay, let me hear this. Okay. As heard in Germany. <laughs> By the way, yes. I think when a woman's eye turns in like that, it's really a turn on. <laughs> I find that sexy. Turn in, turn on. <laughs> turn in, turn on, drop out. <laughs> okay, go ahead. In an effort to keep you updated on Hurricane Bertha, Tom Ditt joins us now on the phone with the North Carolina Emergency Management Service in Raleigh-Durham. Tom, uh, we understand that most of the Outer Banks are being evacuated at this time? Uh, yes, ma'am. There is a severe hurricane warning being issued for the Outer Banks of North Carolina and parts of Paris Island. Uh, Paris Island residents, military units, and dependents are expected to be evacuated within the next 24 hours uh, pending the arrival of uh, Hurricane Bertha. Uh, do, do you think that you might be able to listen to Howard Stern? Well, we haven't had that one of those in a while, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. right. Especially during a hurricane. Really? We'll have an update on uh, where Hurricane Bertha is headed without the help of Howard Stern and his cronies coming up <laughs> in the next hour. Especially during a hurricane. Yeah, that guy Tom Bitt, he was a real guy. He's the real guy from the emergency management. I got to tell you something, Jenks. I'm pretty impressed with the way you give out uh, official information. I got to. Well, thank you. Alex. I mean, he's pretty good. Yeah, that whole Paris Island thing was pretty credible. You know what's ama amazing? I I never know what those guys are talking about anyway. So <laughs> it's like, sounds real. It sounds real to me. Maybe I'll get a job doing that. <laughs> yeah, you could. I've actually gotten good at it. Hey, is her is her eye the same color as the other eye? No. The no. One that, no. No, she has one light blue eye and one brown eye. If you were on TV, wouldn't you get yourself a good glass eye? <laughs> oh, come on. You don't think she got a fake eye that was the wrong color. Wrong size. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Howard, I'm videotaping myself, too, now, so. What do you mean? I'm, you know, I'm rolling videotape on, you know, doing this call so I can send it to the E-Crew. Oh, really? Are you nude? I'm sitting uh... on the toilet, Howard, actually. <laughs> good. All right, I got to go. Tom Ditt is now with us on the phone with the North Carolina Emergency Management Services in Raleigh. Tom, are you there? Good Did we just hear that? Yes. Oh, he's going to play it again it's for us? replay. Yeah. Oh, man. That kid is weird, Captain Jenks. Never gets laid, never leaves the house, just keeps making funny phone calls. I like the first one better where he just sort of threw in the, the words yeah. in the middle of the report and so the, he didn't get caught. Yeah, and the guy just was like, oh, okay. He started asking him questions. Yeah, he didn't even pay attention. He said, F. Jackie. The guy goes, yeah, can you give us some more information? <laughs> <laughs> you know what about F. Jackie? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Thursday night, August 1st, hosting a big benefit at Rascals in West Orange, New Jersey, for information. Uh, a benefit? For Morton Downey, I believe. He has breast cancer. What is it for, against breast cancer? Yeah, yeah I'm against that. No, sure. I hate anything that affects the breast. Jackie is definitely against breast yeah, cancer. Yeah, I admire you, pal. <laughs> we have to rid this world of breast cancer. Absolutely. Isn't that a bitch? The thing guys love the most ends up getting cancer and they Jackie drop them off. definitely pro-breast. Yeah. Jackie really cares about breast cancer. Because <laughs> people said to me, why don't you come out against uh, testicle cancer? I go, I don't care about guys' testicles. <laughs> I, don't care if, I don't care as long as I got mine. I just care about uh, breast cancer. Now we found charity for yeah, breast cancer. breast cancer. I'm going to join up with you on that, Jackie. All right, you'll be there. Yeah, see if I can do something for you. <laughs> uh, unless there's a vagina cancer fund. Well, there is. Fund. Cervical oh. cancer. Is that right? Sure. Because more than breasts, I love vagina. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one with me. I love that part of the body. Mmm, do I love it. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a toy. I love that. You women, what you got between your legs it makes you put... You know, that's how we put up with you, because you're also a goddamn pain in the ass. Oh, thank you. Oh, man. Except you. You're not a, you're not a woman. <laughs> you're like a guy. I'm more than a woman. Yeah, you're more than a woman. <laughs> Don't put yourself in that class. <laughs> women are a pain in the ass. I'm telling you. Don't even pay attention to them, because what they'll do is they'll break your heart and suck you dry. What? And they're all what? out to what get... you on this kick? Well, I'm just telling you guys. Some guy was telling me the other day, he's getting married. I said, what are you, a dope? Like, you know who's getting married? Who? Ronnie, the limo driver's son. Yes, he is. I said, what are you, stupid? He doesn't have a radio show. Yeah, well, get he gets <laughs> plenty of broads, that kid. He's very cute. And it's going to stop. Well, yeah, he's only getting one now. Uh, <laughs> the rest of his life. <laughs> Good luck. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, what's up? 
Howard? Hey, what's up? Yeah, man. Well, yo, I'm down with that. Yeah, man. Yo, F. Um, John Stossel, man. With the F. White John Stossel. <laughs> F. John Stossel. Yeah. From 2020. Yeah. What about him? Yo, he did a story on me last Friday. On you? Yeah. Who well, are you? Just a little bit. Well, what, the, what happened was last year he called me up because I, I had this. Uh, I have this case against the TA. You might remember, I was on your show last year. On What's the, the TA? Uh, the Black Transit Man Authority. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't take the subway. Well, anyway. Yeah, so. Anyway, I'm suing the TA because they don't want to, they don't want to promote me for, you know, because of my weight. Oh, you're a fat guy? Yeah, well, I'm pretty big. And what, they don't want to, what, what do you what mean? What do you do? Well, right now I'm a cleaner. They don't want to promote you? What did you want to be? I want to be a train operator. Well, of course not. You can't fit in the caboose. Yeah, how you gonna... No, no, I can't fit in it. I can't fit in it. Yeah, you know. You know, you gotta you gotta slim down a little bit. You know, it is unhealthy to have an over an obese because if you guys get stressed out, you could have a heart attack right in the train. I don't want you driving yeah, no the train. Thing, the thing is, if if we do get a heart attack, they get, there's a thing called a dead man's uh, feature where if we if we drop dead of anything, the train comes to a complete stop and no one's hurt. No, 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 man. I I believe the TA might be onto something, but go ahead. Well, anyway. Yeah. How do you know that's why they're not promoting him? Yeah, how do you know you're not just a crummy worker? They vote See, on my... A lot of fat people think they don't get promoted because they're fat. Yeah. I don't believe that. I think they're just lazy. No, 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 no. They vote on my thing, Mor morbid obesity. Oh. Oh, that was the reason for turning you down? Yeah. Hey, you must... I bet you take... How much you weigh? I bet you take huge dumps. I used to weigh like around 440. 440? Yeah, but now... No wonder. Like, oh, for God's sake. You but can't, now, now I'm down to like uh, 395. And you know what? One day you'll be reading, they can't get him out of the train. Right, yeah. You know, like he's stuck in there. <laughs> you know, he's proud. He got down to 395. <laughs> Imagine like that. That would make a dent. Can anybody tell? Oh, no. I mean, I am trying to lose Do people weight. come up to you and go, hey, you look great. You lost weight, didn't you? Well, I did lose weight. But, hey, I mean, skinny. I not, hey. <laughs> Why don't you just lose some weight, dude? Yeah, but they're not going to hurt me anyway. You should see how much weight I've lost. Did you notice how skinny I am? You are. You're a real. Look at this. Look at this, Robin, for the movie. I mean, I haven't been eating. I stopped eating like weeks ago. But, Howard, do you oh, believe that they're yeah. as big as me? back to private parts. I'm back to being thin, aren't I? Yeah. yeah. Book cover. But, mm -hmm. Howard. I am cute. Howard. <laughs> how come your nibbles are so big? I was looking at those. No, they're not. I had to cut, I had to cut the... Um, we cut off all the hair. If I had the hair, my nipples wouldn't look but this wait a minute. engorged. I was watching the Olympics last night, mm. and the swimmer, Tom Dolan, I think yeah. his name is, they were like little Yeah, ducks. because he's coming out of the water, and his nips are cold. Oh, well, my that nips, yours would be my like nips, that? You're seeing my nips fully aroused. <laughs> First of all, I have beautiful nipples. Oh, I really do? do. I do. Thank you for telling me. I really me. do. Aren't they gorgeous, Jackie? Seriously. I'm looking at them. I'm a nice-looking guy. Sure. Yeah. All right, enough of the nipples, all right? Hey, dude. <laughs> this guy's got a problem. We're talking you should see this guy's nipples. <laughs> Here, his was hanging down to his ankle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, what do you want? What do you, all right, so, so is, what's the point of your story? Okay, the point of the story is... He called me up. He said, listen, we want to do a story about you and your problem with TA. Fine. So uh, we have a, a meeting down at the Transit Museum, which, by the way, everyone should go see. It's a nice place to check out old museums. Anyway, he comes down. What are you, one of those guys who's, like, in love with subways or something? Yeah, what do you have, a, a subway fixation? <laughs> yeah, I used to. But after working down here eight years, uh, I've become uh, very cold-hearted because of the way they, they treat people and stuff. All right, so just tell me what your point is. All right, my point is, he come, he does an hour-long interview with me, does little demonstrations in the in the, in the uh, subway cab that show that I can fit and I can operate the train safely. Okay. How down did you fit? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, did, <laughs> did they just I have get the door closed? I mean, what if there's an emergency and you got to really get the, like, like, let's say the door becomes hinged or stuck. You can't, you can't shimmy your way out of there. <laughs> Do you no get one laid? Can, then, then, then no one can. Do you ever get laid? I'm married. What's oh, you, you are? Yeah. Do you ever squish your wife? No, oh, man. Do you get on top of her? All day, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Is she big and fat, too? No, no, she's average. <laughs> How much does she weigh? About 380. About 150. <laughs> 150. Wow. 150 is big. You realize that? But next to him, uh, she looks like a ram. I mean, who wants a babe that weighs 150? He hey, does. Man. That's skinny. Well, How tall is she? I'm sorry that you like perfection women and stuff. But How tall is she? 4'11"? No, she's 5'9". Uh, five, uh, five, I mean, she's 5'4". 5'9". 5'9", 150? Yeah, she's, yeah up, she's like right up to my chin. She's How about, tall are you? I'm 6'3". Sheesh. And she's up to your chin? Yeah. Looks like a full bag. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah, so just right, tell so me yeah. your point. All right, so anyway, now... 
Last Friday, the show comes on. How many times a day do you go to the bathroom? You know, number two. Oh, uh, that could be a factor, one too. What? Maybe one. Once? Mm -hmm. But when you go, it must be unbelievable. Can I finish, man? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's all right. so the, the it must be like a bang, do you? Yeah, I've been on planes before. Imagine he was on that plane that blew up. Oh, we know why it went down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It would never take it off. Those people would still be alive. Rolled into the water. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so, so I'm, I'm watching 2020 because the show's coming on right. on that Friday. Right. And all they do is show me working. And then when they ask me uh, from the interview, all they do is take one sentence out right. of that. Of course. Well, yeah, that's well, too they good. couldn't do an hour-long special on you. Ask me, do you consider yourself disabled? And I said, under the uh, law of the Americans with Disabilities Act, I, I am perceived as a, dis as a dis disability. And then he comes running on saying, well, you know, how, you know, how big people should not be included with blind and crippled and stuff like that. But no, they shouldn't. Why not? The because the blind people can't do anything about it. Yeah, a blind person, if he stops eating, he's still blind. You stop eating, you get you're not disabled anymore. No, but but, but do you believe that people could be uh, overweight be, f no. genetics? No, no. Let, let me say, go to fly to Biafra, see if there's any genetics there where people are overweight. No, 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 no. I believe because my brothers, I have two younger brothers. Oh, come on, listen, and listen they to are me. Thin as rails. Listen and to me. And the only difference between me and my brothers is that we have the same mother but different father. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something, pal. Mm -hmm. You ever see these uh, countries where uh, you're a black man, right? Yeah, all day long. With some of your, yeah, right. Some of your black fr your friends are over there in Biafra? Mm hmm With the flies around yeah, their head? they don't have that weight problem. Yeah, did you notice there's not one genetically person, genetically fat person? There's also not a lot of food there, too, you know? That's right. So what does that tell you? Guess what? Guess what? Well, what because it's, it's, your problem? <laughs> well, you know what you're eating. What do you eat for breakfast? What I eat for breakfast? Yeah. Uh, well, right now I'm on a special diet. No, what do you eat for breakfast when you're eating? Well, <laughs> Forget the special diet. Before, I used to have, like, say, cereal. A cereal? Yeah. A, a box? box. <laughs> no, not a whole box. <laughs> yeah, all right. What cereal would you have? Like, say, uh, cornflakes. The cornflakes? With the sugar on, frosted flakes. No, cornflakes. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, you know, you know this is all a lie. Right, right. what'd you put on you the ate, cereal, You sir? ate one portion of cornflakes. <laughs> no, not one portion. All right, a half a box, would you say? Not half a box. What did you eat? Like, maybe a quarter of a box. All right, a quarter of a box of cornflakes from, for breakfast. Mm -hmm. With the skim milk? Yeah. Or regular milk? 1% one, one milk. 1%. One percent. Well, why would you eat 1%? What do you need the extra fat for? Because it tastes so good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so even that's not so bad. And how much sugar did you put on? Like about two teaspoons. All right, uh, two teaspoons. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, two tablespoons. <laughs> tablespoons. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's six teaspoons. Yeah, right. Okay, and then uh, and what did you eat for lunch? All right, for lunch, sometimes I have uh, salad. No, what? no, 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 not now. Salad. <laughs> With your special. What are you saying that for, my brother? I'm sorry, my man. <laughs> All right. Anyway. I got to go. All you right. know what? They'll never tell you about the 50, no. you know, the two dozen eggs. The 80, the 80 and the frappuccinos. And I go, I go to the store and get me a frappuccino. Yeah, a frappuccino. Oh, <laughs> That's what they eat on the movie set, frappuccinos. I got 20-ounce frappuccino here for you. Oh, like, Jesus, look at the party going well, on any, well, I mean, the thing is, I mean, he, he just, uh, well, that, well, well, the thing is about that show is, he put me in with people who All right, are... I got to go, okay? Yeah. Thanks. All right, man. I bet lettuce has never seen your mouth. Yeah, I guess I think you have. <laughs> That's right. I all right, man. All right. Hey, what do you want from me, man? I can't talk to you all day. I got tons of because stuff to talk about. Because we have both in common. Uh, what? He, you know, Stossel screwed us, man. Stossel? Oh, he did, did work for me. He, screwed, he did screw me. He screwed you. Well, he, he made love to you, but me, he... All right. <laughs> all right. What is that guy? He's very funny. He says, you know, you don't believe that... Uh, fat is genetic. Hmm. He says, I have two brothers who are absolutely skinny, <laughs> and the only difference between us is that we have different fathers. Yeah. <laughs> Black man with <laughs> different fathers and all the confusion. I was like, oh my God. Same, oh, man. same parents except for one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's 50% of your genes. Yeah, now look at here. <laughs> what a crew. Mm. Well, I'll tell you something. You know, 
We should be on the radio in Atlanta. That's what everyone was begging for. It's such for. a joke that we're not. Yeah. I'm going to ask the uh, president of Infinity to put me on in Atlanta. He has the power to do it. They own 18 radio stations in Atlanta or something like that. There's some markets we own every radio station in the entire market. <laughs> Does anybody <laughs> you know? know that this is going on? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is out of control. <laughs> So, 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 I mean, why can't we... And they got the, that friggin' Grease man on in Atlanta on the Infinity Station. Isn't he bombing? He's bombing. Time? He's like, he's the only guy on in Atlanta. He's like number 10 in the market. You know what I heard about him? What? You know, he still lives in Los Angeles. Yeah. But he's not even on the air in Los Angeles anymore. So right. So he does his show from Los Angeles to Atlanta. And then in some markets, they like time delay it. But why didn't he just go to Atlanta? Yeah, go live the there. Yeah, he's where, on. Yeah. where they actually hear him. Well, he, he had a whole game plan, I heard. But he, he was going to go to Los Angeles. And he was going to take over the country, of course, with his syndicated show. Another great idea See, that I had. I heard that he went out to L.A. because of his acting career. Yeah. But it hasn't got off the ground. So he's trying to work <laughs> on his acting career, but he's getting up at 3 o'clock every morning. Trust me, he's no actor. To do his show to the East Coast. Right. Like, why does he need to be up at 3 I don't see many roles for a guy who goes... <laughs> you mean he does something besides that? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, like, like, what is he going to do? Othello? <laughs> <laughs> he's big in Greenland. They're going to syndicate him out there. The grease man. Funniest thing I ever hooga, hooga, hooga. The hell's he talking about? The funniest thing I ever saw him do was pose in Playboy with his muscles and his gun collection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Well, he used to do a thing to Grease Man where when he first got on the radio, he wouldn't be photographed because he, w he would only release cartoon pictures of himself. Oh, boy. And he made himself out to be like a real, like a, like a hillbilly S right. kicker, you know. Like a real uh, big... A real yeah. redneck? Yeah, and he, the whole big thing was no one had ever seen the Grease Man or, you know, or knew his real name. Uh -huh. And then I guess when he went to Washington, D.C. and stole my job and got all my money. Right. He uh, went in there and uh, revealed his name and showed... And, and it turned out he was like a bloated... But like, he was like into weightlifting, but I guess... I don't know if he takes steroids or whatever. I think he does. He, I don't know if he does or he doesn't, but his arms look all... Like, you know a guy who... He looks like a balloon man. Yeah, he looks like a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> the Michelin guy. And I guess he thought he was real good looking because he was posing with his shirt off and posing with guns and he had some young wife. I don't know what was going on there. And he had that whole... Hey, <laughs> I can't even. What, what does he do again? I forget how it sounds. Gibe gibe. Gibe gibe. Which is kind of funny for maybe a minute, for, for not a whole morning show. Hey, how you doing? Let's take some calls. Gibe gibe. He used so, to keep that voice up the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I admire that. I've heard through the grapevine that he keeps that voice up when he's not doing that show. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Like well, it's become in, his identity. In acting class, that must be. Really I've heard yeah. that. I've heard. Really I don't, cute. Imagine him on an audition for a movie role. <laughs> give a give. A. Give a give. A. <laughs> well, you don't understand. We need a romantic lead. I know somebody. <laughs> waddle waddle. <laughs> but we know somebody who said he did that voice at dinner. Well, I know somebody in another while he's eating who went out to dinner with him, his wife, and his producer. Yeah. And all three of them do that voice. <laughs> so if you're not in on it, that's a real weird thing. <laughs> who, who's this producer now? Bill Scanlon. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Bill. I'll have a steak. You know what? <laughs> I'll have a steak. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. I hear his wife talks in pig Latin, so she does the voice and pig Latin. <laughs> <laughs> so evidently, he's on in Atlanta and really bombing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just beg Infinity Broadcasting to put me on in Atlanta. I really want to be on in Atlanta. I don't know why, but I do. We, we do great. We'd what? We would do great down there. I'm uh, telling you, the people of Atlanta really dig it. Yeah, I know. Oh, we do every, great everywhere. Fooey. We should be on everywhere. And now I'm just stealing my TV concept. I know. No, and, and it's funny. All the articles I read on, no one said, hey, in, in an effort again to be Howard Stern, he's going to do exactly what Howard Stern does, tape his radio. They all act like he's doing something original. Eh, cheers. I'm sick from the whole thing. So anyway. They're not doing movies, Howard. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what? So anyway, on Saturday night, because it's really You went fun. to the strip club. I went to the strip club, and the guys that own it are... Hey, seriously, man, I want you to talk to Lonnie, speaking of strip club. Yes. I got to have five You're or six... You're busy. I got to have five <laughs> or six girls come down to my trailer and give me the time when? of my life. <laughs> the time of my life. 
Well, I don't know. <laughs> I gotta have a bachelor party. You're not talking. Oh, about I'm ready to explode. You're not talking about anything illegal. You just mean have fun. Illegal? Well, yeah, I mean no, just lap dancing right. and all that kind of stuff. What is illegal? Well, it's like, give me the Sex time of my illegal. life. Well, that's about the time of the life that I can have. You know, I play. I'm a straight shooter. Okay. Do you want to? Do you, I'll you, shoot straight into the window. Would, would you like me? To, would you like me? To, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Would you like me to get 15 down here in the morning and you can pick the five you need to come to your trailer? Yeah. and But I also need some other guys in there to make it look kosher. So oh, you, yeah. Right. So <laughs> you give know. me Jackie and Fred. All right, fine. You, it was funny because when I went to this club down in Atlanta, this place right. called the Gold Club, there's girls from Scores. Like, you know, they're all on the circuit. So this girl's like, hey, Gary, how you doing? Right. <laughs> Did you remember me? I was at, you know, I was in with Amy Lynn and I was at your Super Bowl party and mm. I've, I've done two Howard parties. <laughs> and you didn't remember <laughs> you know, her? But no, but do you know what, what I could do? do I, could, I could park my trailer outside Scores <laughs> and have the party right there. Do you realize? Oh yeah, yeah. Come, we, that's not in the movie. <laughs> what scores? Yeah, that's a sequel. <laughs> Do you realize that doing a Howard party is like? I was of, working with some hot babe the other night, huh, Fred? Fred oh, was in a scene with me in a limo. Gorgeous. I think she liked me. I think I, I'm telling you, I felt like an out. I felt like the third wheel. I felt bad about that on, on a date. I'm what, going like, what was going maybe I should on get here? out of the car, but I couldn't. I did get a out scene with a girl in a limo. And I don't know. We were hitting it off pretty good. And, <laughs> Fred was kind of in the car. Was there? Yeah, but Fred like had to turn around and talk to the driver. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 was was like, after I was pretty deeply engrossed. You were making your move. Yeah, well, we had to get comfortable with one another. Making talk. Yeah. What? What? Well, we were just trying to get you know. To, actors Can, have to get to know each other. Yeah, yeah. sure. Because not male actors, just men and actors. female actors. Are, are you still married? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, I just want to make oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, my wife. Because you're never home. Yeah, I know. No, I was actually I was home a lot during. I I would go home and sleep. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. They saw you sleeping. <laughs> well, no, we had sex. I had sex with my wife yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I gave home and gave it she to her. She remembered you? Yeah, like she wasn't in the mood or anything. She said, listen, I'm really horny. You better get upstairs if you want to save this marriage. <laughs> I can't so, this marriage be Yeah, saved. if you want to have this marriage work out. So she goes, so what do I have to do? I, she says, because, you know, I'm in my period. I said... Uh. I said, well, it's always like torture for I said, why don't you go upstairs and get some of this uh, sesame oil and rub me? So she goes, all right. Oh, so we went up there. That was like that's a exciting. real yeah. wonderful time. Yeah, yeah, I'm really so having a party. <laughs> so I get up there, I lay down on the bed nude, spread my legs. Uh, <laughs> there it is, is right. <laughs> Do you get completely nude? Uh, yeah, completely nude. And does she rub everything? No, just oh. the area that I need. <laughs> we don't have that much oil. Yeah, I just get right to it, you know. Oh. And accidentally, I said, oh, Mary, because she's my screen wife. Oh, oh, you, know, no. you know, I get confused between the two of them. <laughs> you would have said Allison, because that's how you know Mary. That's right. So anyway, yeah, see, no problem there. <laughs> no, so actually, I, uh, you know, I lay down on the bed nude, and she uh, gets out the uh, well, sesame oil. Sesame like. oil? This yeah. is new. Yeah, sesame oil is what I'm into. Because that's from the TM organization. Yeah, know. but they don't use it for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I improvise. <laughs> when you do transcendental meditation, they, you know, sometimes you read up on stuff. They use a lot of sesame oil. For what? For cooking, oh. for, for uh, massaging. And for massaging and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so I said, put some of that on there. <laughs> See what happens. See if it works. <laughs> I'll get enlightened while you're doing this. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I said, just rub some oil in there. So uh, <laughs> she, uh, she was doing that for a while, and, you know, I'm uh, listen. I'm 42 years old already. I need a little more than that. You know, I'll be, be there all day. And so, and I mean, it's, it's, she's like pulling a carrot out of the ground. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> <She's> uh, rooting. <laughs> rooting. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I had a little of that for about a half hour. And finally, I got a little embarrassed. I said, nothing was happening. Well, I mean, I was uh, completely excited, but I uh -huh. needed more. I told uh -huh. her I needed more. So she had to. Uh, I said, get rid of that uh, hmm. uh, that thing you use for your time in a month. <laughs> Let me see if I can. She goes, well, you never do that. I said, well, you better do it. I'm in bad shape here. <laughs> so uh, she walks off to the bathroom, does whatever the hell that goes on in there. I didn't want to think about what was going on in there. <laughs> and I said, put on a 90, okay? Because my wife's looking really good. I mean, her body's super tight from working out. So I said, uh, well, maybe that was my screen wife. Oh, dear. I don't know. What One of them. So anyway, I... Uh, Somebody's tight. <laughs> Somebody was tight. <laughs> I know that. Anyway, uh... So she went into the closet there, put on one of these nightgowns she had on. She looked pretty good. Uh -huh. You know, a little negligee, if you will. And then I uh, I got on top of her. With the oil? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wrecked that 90. And then I uh, did her. I did her uh, for about a half hour. Because I'm not the same man I used to be. I used to be done in a second. Like triple your time. I know. Or well, not I'm drinking have now. time at all. Do you know I'm drinking now? 
What are you, what are you drinking? drinking heavily. Drinking what? I drink wine and beer and uh, pot. I smoke pot. <laughs> he drinks the pot. <laughs> yeah, I smoke. Yeah. I smoke but tremendous you, amounts of marijuana. Do you, do you now. really drink? Like, what do you? What's a drink? For? <laughs> I got to get through this. Like, how many <laughs> drinks we have? All right. Uh, the the other night we got sh- we got done shooting uh, at about two o'clock in the morning. Are you drinking alone? Yeah. <laughs> I got done shooting about uh, two o'clock in the morning. I checked myself into a hotel. I drank a bottle of wine. A bottle? A yeah. bottle of wine. Wow. Yeah, it was a little bottle. No, no, no. The bottle was like one of these bottles. Yeah, yeah like a 12 yeah, but it had a bottle. something. And then I polished off a Miller Lite. Yeah. He thinks that's you get a loaded? bottle of wine. Yeah. I mean, you must be, you, you, don't, you haven't drank And I drank it right from the bottle. But you haven't drank regularly in like 20 you years. You drank the be, wine from get, the bottle? I was, wa- I was hammered. you got to get hammered. Yeah, and then I pass out and I go back to work. <laughs> Did you have a hangover? Ah, I felt pretty good. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you and Jack, you'll be hanging out. Yeah. I believe That's why I got to have a scores party. <laughs> so you're going to be drinking? Drink and do all kind of things. Hey. I'll be on heroin by next week. <laughs> cool. Well, shoot up between your toes. Now I see why these actors class. shoot up. So, so I want yeah. I want so to go to the strip club. So I want to tell Robin who I met yeah, at the strip club. Why don't you club. tell me about how you have a life and I don't? No. Yeah. I want to tell Robin who I met at the strip club. Everybody's coming in here two weeks a vacation. Everyone's got stories. Rob is in Italy. Fred's out in Amagansett. Jackie was on the jetty drinking and beering. Gary, busy at strip clubs yeah. and the Olympics. Me, I'm sitting in a trailer watching Cindy Crawford movies and goofing on them. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, but you were Mary. Yeah, who cares? She's not giving me anything. I know. So who did you meet at this strip give me a, club? Give me a scores met, broad. We'll do something. I met Magic Johnson. <laughs> you met Magic Johnson at, at a strip, strip club? club? Yeah. No. Do you know what the girl told me? What? One of the girls that danced this, she said it was his third night in a row. Oh. No kidding. I mean, that's got to be frustrating as hell for Now, he's that. working as a commentator I for the know, Olympics. Not at the strip club. He wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying that's why he's down yeah, in Atlanta. I didn't know why he was down there. I yeah. see. Because I heard him doing the commentary on uh, the color on some of the games. He was uh. with some big, like really fat black guy that was sort of like a bodyguard, but he was yeah. wearing a tuxedo right. with like a funny color tie, and he just stands in front of the room <laughs> where magic is. Uh-huh. But it's like, the, what's the point, man? I mean, everyone knows he's got AIDS. Do the girls even go near girl him? Are girls sleeping with him? I guess AIDS hasn't slowed him down. I can it look. hasn't made him sick. Has it slowed him down? <laughs> right. He's, he's Superman. Yeah, but amazing. <laughs> and to me, I'm perfectly clean. No one touches me. <laughs> Everyone's got an issue. The guy that owns the club is a huge fan of the yeah, show. Yeah. So he comes over and he goes, hey, Magic Johnson's here. Want to meet him? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Did you go over and meet him? Yeah, so he brought me over and, and uh, you know, it was loud. I don't know if Magic Johnson knew he where I was from. He wasn't thinking about you. Or, or yeah. cared. He just yeah. got up and he shook my hand. Hey, glad to meet you. And like, what's he doing? Is he getting a lap dance or is he just watching chicks? He was actually just sitting with a girl chatting. Really? Yes. See, he likes to chat. Yeah, now he chats. Was he aroused? I couldn't tell. Was his Johnson on magic? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. We just thought it was sort of weird that he was at the club. Yeah, it is kind of weird. No, I heard he was still going to strip clubs. Really? Yeah. That's kind of like, you know, it's like a eunuch hanging out in a harem. Maybe he's like you. Well, <laughs> that's my excuse. I might as well have AIDS. No, I don't know what he's doing at a strip club. He was probably in shock over the TWA crash. <laughs> Going there to green? Yeah. I'm depressed. I'm depressed. <laughs> Maybe it made him just forget himself. I forgot I had AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> How weird. Hello? Hi, Howard. Hi. How are you? Miserable. Miserable. I'm sorry to hear that. No, I hate life. Yeah, I do. Oh, he does not. <laughs> Why don't you kill yourself then? There's a way out. You know? thought about no, it. Don't do that. I thought, thought about, about it. it. No, that wouldn't be a good idea. I might what, do are it. You threatening me now? Yeah. You see, you'll be at my funeral. <laughs> you know what I'm doing? I'll blow myself up so you can't identify the body. <laughs> be like the TWA thing, and everyone can complain. I'll be screaming for my part. Yeah. I recognize that ear. <laughs> That's him. Yeah. Could you reach through the phone and touch my lap? <laughs> Is that possible? Can, can they make a phone that'll do that? Is I that would... what it would take to make you feel better? Mm. I would love that. What an invention. <laughs> a phone where you could reach through and touch somebody's lap. <laughs> yeah, who wants to see people? Yeah. By the way, the movie's coming out real good. I mean, at, all my work wasn't in vain. I'm yeah. so goddamn brilliant Ugh. in this film. And uh, Ivan Reitman said I'm one of the best actors he's ever seen. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Just thought I'd mention that. 
Ten times better than Bill Murray, he said. Ten times? Yeah. Thanks. Murray's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Murray's not bad. <laughs> Did you see that Cher has admitted to having lesbian affairs? Yes, with a man. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> he had a very small penis. <laughs> you got watch on your ass? A bunch of them. I like Irish girls because they're drunk and dumb. That's what I like. No, I'm not dumb. They don't nag. I don't they're too drunk. They're too drunk to nag. <laughs> I like dumb chicks. I'm not dumb. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> That's the baby, huh? That's what we've all been waiting for. Yeah. You jerk. <laughs> now you got to sit and worry about this. Does the baby stutter? <laughs> not yet. This is stuttering Greta. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine she stutters. I'll have a next generation. Oh God! <laughs> we raising my next generation of interviewer. Hey, congratulations! Are you feeling good about it? You yeah, feeling positive? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How's your girlfriend? All right. Yeah, she's fine. And she's stuck at home now with the kid. Yep. Wait till she starts yelling at you. You better get home. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. That's. I, I love it. Man. Yeah, did you, I know. Did you? Did you? Did you go in the, in the uh, labor room? <laughs> yeah. Did you like it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's great. <laughs> he I was never sick. Heard you talk about it. I was sick for days. I, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it great seeing your, your woman's uh, private parts stretched to it the size of, like, a basketball court? The uh, gag bag. You see that big black, that brown bag that comes out? Like the uh, placenta? Oh, I ate that. <laughs> I ate the placenta. <laughs> it's good for protein. It makes my hair powerful. <laughs> Did they cut her? No. They didn't? No. They stopped doing that a lot. Yeah. Not to my wife, they cut her. I made them sew up extra tight. <laughs> no, they didn't cut her. They didn't cut her? She no. didn't rip? Wow. No, she, she not real. She's bleeding, but it was a real mess. Did you watch the head come out? Yeah, yeah, Isn't that beautiful. <laughs> he said it was at that point she turned into the Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. He was like somebody help me. <laughs> <laughs> Did they dope her up real good? Yeah, with the yeah. Uh, yeah. epidural. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's she complaining about? <laughs> but it still hurts. You know what? If I was a woman, I'd be knocked out. Look, and then... John, I walk in. John goes, "Oh, it was great." I said, "Yeah, you didn't have the baby." Yeah, right. <laughs> Because they have to push. Was like, it one of those 24-hour labors? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. Because I know I heard you on the phone. I was listening to the radio station. He would call him with reports sort of like what I did. Is that right? Yeah, he sounded kind of like me. I said, well, I don't know that's what you did. How would I know? You wouldn't know that? No, oh, I wasn't oh, around then. You made that up? <laughs> Wait, listen. I give John credit, though. I thought this was going to slow his life down. He told me they went to the movies last night with the baby. Really? With, with the baby? The baby? Yeah, yeah. And oh the baby isn't crying in the movie? No, I slept through the whole movie. The really? baby's in a coma. <laughs> yeah, in the back. Saw who her father was. Went to the movies. <laughs> Anyway, so John went out on the street and asked people uh, about Independence Day, what 4th of July. 4th of July. Huh? And it turns out, yes, it's true. As it said in the newspaper, most people do not know <laughs> what Independence Day is. I can't wait to I'm just, hear I'm just trying to find out, do you know, you know why we celebrate the 4th of July? Not really. Did it? Just a, a holiday that they give out, and we just have fun. That's all. I never really even thought about it. You know, to me, it's just a day to just shoot off a bunch of firecrackers and raise hell. <laughs> you know? God, oh God. Way to go. <laughs> wouldn't, you, like, wouldn't you be curious why you had the day off? Jeez. A little bit? Yeah, they just did it. Did anybody go to school? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> that, that was supposed to be the day that America... I think that's more of an embarrassing answer, where I someone forgot. says, I forgot, because it's like that assumes that you knew, knew. and then, then you forgot. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you let that you information... You had so many other things you needed to remember. All right. <laughs> you know? Oh, gosh. I forgot. <laughs> that, that was supposed to be the day that America became a free continent, right? Or uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, you know, what happened on the... <laughs> <laughs> it started floating away from the other yeah. continents. <laughs> no. What's that? Not really. No, I mean, you know, what happened on that day? The, I don't know. This is, that was America. This is America. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, what do I got to do with that? Yeah, stop pressuring the man. This is 1996. What's it got to do with me? Don't blame me why I became incontinent. <laughs> I'm not incontinent. That's all I know. I go every day. America's incontinent. <laughs> is that? <laughs> And I'm hot. <laughs> All right. No, I mean, you know, what happened on that day that would you know, make us a free country? But it's because it separated uh, the colonies. I don't know. I'm not in history. I'm not in history. 
I don't know. I, I wonder what he's into. Chemistry. <laughs> yeah, chemistry. You should have asked him what his subject was, and you had another set of questions. I became a chemical engineer. I mean, I concentrated in one area. <laughs> if you ask me the chemical makeup for titanium, I could tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Uh, <laughs> but I don't. I did know. I don't forgot that. Why ici c'est bon vraiment on n'a pas y a pas de mal ici quoi ici tout est bon quoi on vend les marchandises. I wonder if he's speaking English. That John asked the guy, you know, what do you think 4th of July is? And that was his answer. Really? <laughs> Get out of here. What is that? What the hell is that? Why, ici, c'est bon, vraiment, on n'a pas, il n'y a pas de mal ici, quoi. Ici, tout est bon, quoi. On vend les marchandises. Vraiment, everything okay, quoi. Do you think he's speaking in English? I don't think so. <laughs> if he is, that's funny. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> but I don't know that it's a language that they speak <laughs> of any sort. That's the language of love. Marsandis, Brema, everything okay, Oh, we celebrated for, you know, the that Independence Day was the day um, we was independent. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, finally a bright man. Finally a man, you know. <laughs> We became ourselves. You know what? He used his powers of deduction. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that would be accepted in a blue book exam? <laughs> uh, Independence Day, independent. Okay. <laughs> a, was that the day we became independent? B, was that the day we became incontinent? <laughs> <laughs> to get a day off from work, I celebrate Ku Klux Klan Day. I wouldn't even dance. <laughs> I celebrate the 4th of July. I have no idea. I, I have no idea. Reason I could tell you one thing, and that'd be totally different from when the next person celebrates the Fourth of July. Mm. I don't even f celebrate the. It's personal interpretation. I see. Yeah. Fourth of July. I tell you the truth. And then why is that? Why is that? I don't know. I don't feel pretty much independent like that. Mm. So what do you think happened? You know. You know that makes us celebrate it. I couldn't even tell you. Probably barbecue. <laughs> Everybody want a barbecue. You know how black folks are. The Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, know, nobody knows the holiday. That's amazing. I was shocked when I read that in the paper. But it seems to be true. It seems to be true. It does seem to be true. You know, there's a whole other answer that I was really shocked at when I listened to these tapes. You either know it or you don't. Right. There's a whole bunch of black people who refuse to celebrate it. Did we just interview black people, or is it just... It, it, it just seemed that way. Oh, I guess you went out on the street in New York, and that's all you found. Oh, please. And that uh, <laughs> happens a lot. What street is this? I know. I walk up and down the street. That's all I see. The black you don't walk, so oh, stop lying. Well, that's true. <laughs> Let me put it this way. The black people that John interviewed yeah. said they don't celebrate it because it's not their holiday. They got no independence. The black guy, the black person got no independence on that day. Right, but I mean, you could still know what the day's about. It's a, it's a white person. It's a white person's holiday. Oh, I see. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that precludes you from knowing what it is. Everybody want a barbecue. You know how black folks are. The Independence Day of America. Yes. What happened? <laughs> huh? Huh? What happened on the Fourth of July? What happened? How did the soul come down? I'm on TV or something, man. Yeah, this radio. Come on, man. I want a TV, man. Where the camera at? Ah. <laughs> hey, guys, complaining. He's too big for radio. Right. Oh, what happened yeah, on, what happened on Father Joe? That's the problem with radio. It's everyone's bastard child. <laughs> you know, it's just Not like even that. Even this man wants to do radio. Oh, on radio? What the hell's that? That's TV without a picture. <laughs> I need that, man. I want a camera, man. What happened, man? I don't know. I really don't. Oh, man. I don't know, man. It's declaration of independence, man. Come on, man. Oh, man. You going to win something? <laughs> well, there you go. So what the... I mean, what is this now I'm listening to? These are the angry people. Angry? Yeah. All right. I want to hear that. Hell happened on July 4th that we celebrated. Well, what really happened, a gang from England, very close to the throne. Now, listen to this because you're not going to read it. And I defy Harvard, Howard, and anybody else. Got in here and got a nice deal going. But England is very f***ed up. The English <laughs> monarchs don't give up <laughs> So the breed Negro down there talk, run that because he had a free slave. And what's it got to do with the wait Negro? Wait a minute. What happened here? We, we took a turn I didn't know we were going to take. White boys in law and land and business decide, you know something, all we need is a reason to get a constitution. Oh, mackerel. This time to the History Channel. <laughs> we're going to start out with the tea. You remember the tea bag? We're going to look like in this dump the goddamn tea. Start some <laughs> And boy, let's raise it. They were unified. 
And the alarm it didn't take long. What's through this guy? Has he got teeth or what? <laughs> no, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's got three. Oh. He's <laughs> unified. And then when the deal come down, the boys that were there in the first place wasn't there to sign the boy. Same guy in the fort wasn't properly represented. That, that might have been the cause of the whole deal. Wow. Wow. Now, these are the really angry guys. I mean, really Because that guy wasn't angry. He was just like, he, he was, was philosoph Yeah, he was philosophizing. <laughs> One of these guys. There are a lot of black guys who philosophize. But, but how that it's guy? true. I grew up in a black community. It was a lot of philosophy I don't think on. it was philosophy. He was teaching history. He yeah. said, you won't read this, but I'll tell you what the deal really was. Yeah, but there's always these guys... Who, who stand on the corner? A, how, yeah. They have an agenda and a yeah. view, but you never know what the hell they do. This talking guy about. just stands on the corner and talks. Yeah. Like he, he yeah. talks I'm himself. telling you, that's, that was yeah. a big thing. About, most of them were winos. I don't know about this guy, but it was just like you know, we'd be like, you know, well, man, wine makes See, you talk. Let me tell you something, Stern. There was a, there was a. Let me tell you something, Stern. You gonna learn something now? He was looking, and I said, okay, I'm, I'm for learning. So I'm gonna learn something now. And they don't be the most convoluted thing. It would go on for hours, and it always ended up that I wasn't gonna live past my 15th birthday because I was so naive. It's like, man, you ain't, you, you, you didn't know this was going on. You eat pork? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, man? Fine. Um, uh -oh. Why do we celebrate the Fourth of July? Why do you celebrate it? I don't celebrate it. Oh, no. How come? Because it's had nothing to do with my people. Well, we're all Americans, right? No, no, we're not. Not in that aspect, no. See, the way I was brought here and the way you was here, two different things. Hmm. Celebration deal more with the European world than the black world. So why do we celebrate it? Why do y'all celebrate it? Due to the so-called independency for y'all forefathers. I mean, did anything happen on the day or something? Calling for y'all the Declaration of Independence, signing the Declaration of Independence. And you guys don't want to uh, celebrate that? I don't celebrate that because I wasn't born here. I mean, my ancestors wasn't born here like that. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. know, not being anti-white or pro-black or anything, just, you know, making it seeing how it really is. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Hey. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Well, at least he knew what it was. He knew about the forefathers. Ironically, that guy has four fathers. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't get four fathers. <laughs> no, I'm sure he didn't have four fathers. Well, he seemed pretty well done. He, he knew what Independence Day was. He knew exactly what he knew, it was. He, and he said, not that we asked him why he celebrates it or not. We just want to know if he knew what it was. <laughs> right. But he got a whole other agenda. And hey, this guy's the best one of all. He's yeah. a Vietnam veteran. Oh, good. So he's real angry. Oh, good. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh. Lots of bleeps. Okay. So why don't we celebrate the 4th of July? Because it sucks. That shit is whack, man. It stands for all the type of shit up shit. Mother that just wanted to take advantage of us and send the people to war to die for some guys' beef that they didn't even start. So all of those liberals and all of those fascist bastards. What happened, though, on that day? What? Fourth of July? Yeah. Who gives a <laughs> it's the 90s. You know what happened on the 4th of July? A whole bunch of people were hooked on drugs and died from HIV and AIDS that man made. Mm. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for that uplifting message. <sighs> wow. Pretty uh, heavy scene out there. Yeah, a simple question like that could really get you in trouble. Yeah, it's very scary out there. Yeah, tell me about it. That's why I don't go there. <laughs> I stay right here. Yes, and you. <laughs> yes, and you. That's why I got you. <laughs> I know how scary it is. All right, thank you, Stuttering John. Congratulations you. on your, you. yeah, thank your you the much. birth of your child. Uh, could, could I do one thing, can, if you don't mind? No. Are you sure? I, I'm I, pretty I, sure. I, 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 I'm still getting Greta Melendez. Greta, Greta Melendez. Osa Melendez. Uh, Oh, you named it after your mother? Yeah, my mother has yeah, uh, the middle names after my mother. Greta Osa? Yeah. Mm. Why Greta? Uh, She's trying to be cool. No, be no, my girlfriend decided that she, she, she wanted to name it Greta. She's a big fan of Greta Garbos. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, boy, who would have put that together? Yeah. What if it was a boy? Would you name it Hansel? <laughs> no, Oscar. Oscar. Yeah, that's my name. Oscar Melendez? Yeah. Oh, that's a great name. Oh, yeah, good. he's real good at naming. Get him beat up. <laughs> yeah, so what do you want to do? I just wanted to... Uh, do you mind if I do this? I'm well, I don't know what you're going to do, so how would I'm, I know if I'm, I mind? Okay, I'm trying to find out. Uh, Use your brain. I'm, I'm, you know, now I'm getting married, right? Oh, are you? Yes. Yeah, so, 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 when is that? So I'm looking for a place where I'm getting married and... and, and I don't, oh, come on, John. Okay, then forget Come on. Then forget I just wanted to... You looking, have a radio show. Do that. Yeah, do it on right? your show. Okay. Why are you doing it on my show? Because everyone listens to yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you need a place to get married? On the Hamptons, on the beach. If anyone has a house on the Hamptons, I'm, I, you, know, you know, I'll pay some money for it. Oh, some money. Are you going to come to my wedding? No. Not interested. Don't they have places that they hold weddings? 
Yeah, yeah it's called a wedding hall, I think. Yeah, are on the beach. They're quite yeah. expensive. So if anyone, if anyone, oh, listens, like, I see. So you want somebody call, to yeah. give yeah, I'll you come to your house. wedding? Sure. Yeah, come. It'll be fun. Be outside on the beach. Yeah. You know, we'll can you blow off some firecrackers? Yeah, if you want. Okay. Can we drop the baby in the water see if it floats? Oh. <laughs> sure. Oh. sure. All right, then I'll come. All right, congratulations again. Thank you very much. And thanks for that basket. That was very nice. Yeah, no problem. No sweat off my balls. He never even knew he sent one. All right. You know what you said? No, I, of course I did. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I was the one who thought of it. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, let's uh, take a break, and uh, we come back, we'll do the news for you, okay? All right. Dudes, I got something. You want to hear something really funny? What? All right. Everyone knows that uh, not only am uh, not only am uh, <laughs> not only is this show the funniest when it comes to ad libbed humor, yes. but prepared humor. It's a uh, top. Oh, stellar. You know, and every once in a while we actually get to work and do a bit. Did you do that? Well, no. Actually, here's a new commercial. Uh, this is a commercial we'd like to hear. How's that? Okay. All right, a commercial we'd like to hear. Sammy Hagar is out of Van Halen, and David Lee Roth is back on welfare and totally out of the question. Is there anyone charismatic enough to be the new frontman for Van Halen? Well, make way for Crackhead Bob. So, you gotta do it now. You gotta do it and get that lag. <laughs> so, you gotta do it now. You gotta do it and you that die. Wow. Van Halen, featuring new lead singer, Crackhead Bob. Dr. Peter, Crackhead Bob, and Van Halen. I got up. And I was still down. <laughs> I got up. Knocking on down. Sherry sings like he's got a mouth full of marbles, but he's certainly less annoying than Sammy Hagar and much more controllable than David Lee Roth. Touch it in the low, touch it with the Bob may look like Curly from the Three Stooges and drag his foot like Bob Dole's dance instructor, but can he rock? <laughs> Since Eddie quit drinking, Van Halen has really been dull. But with Crackhead oh. Bob as the new lead singer, the songs will never sound the same. That's it, get it, takes. That's it, my. Featuring the new lead singer, Crackhead Bob. Look for the tour this fall. Might as well dump. Might as well dump. No, dump, dump, dump. <laughs> dump, dump, dump. <laughs> no. oh, that's cool, isn't it? Isn't that great? Isn't it funny how the crack uh, messed up his speech so that everything starts with a T or a D? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> crack has a consistency that uh, no other drug has. <laughs> it gives you that T and D thing. Man. They call it the T and Ds. That's uh, Crackhead Bob. Well, I, you know, I was afraid that if Bob started to sing, his speech would clear up, you know, like some stutterer. Like Mel Tillis? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> don't be afraid. <laughs> you were afraid. <laughs> I saw Crackhead Bob down here yesterday because we were cutting that thing, and yeah. he does look like Curly from the Free Stooges now. He put on a little weight, and he's waxed his head. <laughs> I know, he cut off all of his hair. Yeah, it's really frightening. <laughs> I don't think he can handle, like, the combing thing, so he just decided to get rid of the hair. How great was that bit? That was incredible. Yeah, that might be the funniest thing we've done in a long time. Crackhead Bob joins Van Halen. I, I heard it. I was. It was. It's. It's so apropos because I understand now that they're saying that David Lee Roth is not rejoining the band. No. He's just working on this new greatest hits album. Yeah, I, I can't seem to get confirmation on any of this. Sammy was supposed to call in, then he canceled. And yeah. uh, David Lee suddenly, uh, who used to call in every week, we can't get him on now, the phone either. Yeah, now he's unavailable. Oh man. 
I got I to play that again later, Crackhead Bob and Van Halen. We got to play it for them. I wish they could hear it. Mm. David, David Lee's guy said that uh, he's going into the studio, right. but he hasn't gone in yet, so since he doesn't have anything to talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 there's nothing, nothing to talk about. about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, David. What about all those years he was doing absolutely nothing I he said, came on? Yeah, yeah, said, yeah he had on. nothing to talk about the last 15 appearances he was I got, on. The guy talked to us about buying pot in Washington Square Park. Why can't he talk about this? I don't know. This is much bigger. <laughs> People are responding to the uh, crackhead Bob bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah, I want to hear it again now. Why do you have to wait? Well, uh, oh, you make people wait, then they have to listen all morning. Uh, See? See? It was so good. Yeah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> people loved it. Look, they love crackhead Bob. And, you know, that's it, but <laughs> that's so. All right. Uh, Chris, you're on the air. Hey, dude. Hey. I, I just peed myself. Oh! <laughs> Come on, don't you want to hear it again? Oh, dude, play it all day. I don't care. Yeah, Crackhead Bob singing Van Halen. Oh, man, that's classic. Hey, Freddie, do we have any outtakes from Crackhead Bob? Like, all outtakes. <laughs> yeah, right. Nothing but outtakes. No, but I mean, do we have, like, actual... The uh, making of? I can have Scott roll some stuff off. Yeah, okay, good. You know, you so did it the... take more than one take to do this? <sighs> Jack, could you explain? <laughs> we kind of went for any take where he got one word that was somewhat like when we got Near. Igolo. Yeah. That was fun. Igolo. <laughs> On to the next tune. Just the Igolo. Because yeah, Jackie was going, there's, there's no way he's going to do it. He, he, he well, you know it. what I'd like to hear? I'd like to hear the raw tape of you guys trying to get him to sing. Yeah. It was frightening. Yeah. Fred said Because I went off to the movie and Fred and Jackie said, we'll work with Crackhead Bob. And I just said, well, run tape on everything because. They didn't know what they were saying. Yeah. We didn't know whether to go for a whole song or just a, a you know little snippets. And Fred looked at me and he said, "I'm not crazy, right? There's no way we could have got a song out of this." <laughs> no, I just wanted to double check. I'm going like, I, he's doing okay, but I don't think there's a song in here. Yeah, let me ask you something. Can he read, or do you have to give him the line? You know what? We went down and blew up the lyrics. And then he just put it in his bad hand, and it just kind of hung there. <laughs> yeah, he didn't try to read them? But what, he couldn't. What, the, what really doesn't translate the tape is every time the thing started, and Fred pointed at him like that, right. and nothing came out. Yeah. <laughs> you we, can't we go start through, on like, cue. Don't admit the dab, and it'd be, it's like, okay, one, two, two three. three. Yeah. And, then, and then you forget running with the devil? And, and he forget. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> you see the frustration coming at him because he really wanted to get it. He well, really wanted to sing it. I've been informed that Scott the Engineer is working on outtakes right now. So.